good morning everyone in this lecture we will discuss about the kirchhoff law kirchhoff laws kirchhoff law why we use the kirchhoff law why there is the need of the kirchhoff law there are many circuits there is uh, there are many circuit in the electricity current electricity in which we cannot find the current or equivalent resistance equivalent emf and this this type of thing easily so there is a one scientist there was there was there was a one scientist spiritual that uh, who gives some laws to find the em uh, to find the current and the resist equivalent resistance in the different in the equivalent resistance easily so there's two resist there is two law first law junction law junction low and this is also known as a cashier what happened in this row this row is based on the law of conservation of charge based on law of conservation of charge this law said that the algebraic sum the statement of of this law is the algebraic sum of the current algebraic sum of the current meeting meeting at a point meeting at a point of the current is zero is zero means suppose there is a point and this is the uh, one branch and two wire this wire is now divided in two parts and here is a current i and here is i1 and and current in this branch is i2 then at this point p the charge will be conserved how much charge suppose there is a q charge and here is q1 and q2 charge then the total charge will be conserved at this point is conserved the total charge coming at the point p is equals to the sum of outgoing charge from the point p means q1 is equal q is equal to q1 q2 if we divide it by q t by t t then i equals to i1 plus i2 means we can write it is that summation of input current is equals to summation of output current okay now the second law is kirchhoff voltage law or kirchhoff law of loop law kirchhoff's voltage law or loop law what this state uh, this current uh, this say that the algebraic sum of the potential difference along a closed loop is zero means the algebraic sum al algebraic sum of the of algebraic sum of all the potential all the potential difference all the potential difference along along a closed along a closed loop closed loop is zero means delta summation i r plus summation e m f equals to zero the closed loop can be transversed in any direction while the transversing a loop is if potential increase but a positive sign is express sign is expression and in potential decrease 
put a negative sign. So let us take an example. Here it is one resistance. plus minus okay this is r1 r2 r3 and the emf of this e then the potential difference in the loop is zero in a loop will be zero so now current is flowing from positive terminal to negative terminal okay now what we will do e what we will do we will uh, we will uh, uh, we will take choose a point like this point I have chosen this point A B C and D okay now what happened we will start from E now current is when where where the current is flowing and current is flowing through the r1 okay now vo some voltage is dropped here some voltage is dropped here so we will write minus i r1 how i i identify simply that if i travel from same direction if i travel from the same direction or positive turn uh, higher here current is flowing from this point to this point so this point this point a is at higher potential and b is lower potential so when we will go through from higher potential to lower potential in any in any device in any resistance in any electrical device then we will write minus I R one because we are taking E as a source and and this is R the gainer or these are the uh, R one R two are dropping the voltage so I one now here is minus I R two minus I R three and is equals to zero so this is the, our equation of this is our potential difference or uh, we can write it is this thing this is the direction of current flowing so now take an example we will take an example like let us take an example here uh, 30 ohm here is 40 ohm and 1 ohm and here is the potential volt uh, cell is of 45 volt okay and this is connected to this and here is another potential uh, voltage cell at t volt so now suppose current is flowing current is flowing in this direction and we will take current is flowing in this direction and in this loop this is called loop what we call here this is called node this is closed circuit this is called loop okay this is called node or junction this is called branch one branch if here here this is this is branch branch 1 branch 2 and branch 3 okay all these things so now we will solve it using the Kirchhoff laws okay now what we will do first first we will consider that uh, we give some points here A B this is A this is B this is C this is D this is okay here is some one more resistance one more resistance is here mm -hmm. 20 ohm this is E this is F and this is 1 ohm 
this is a itself and this is uh, H itself or this is D okay now what we will do this is loop 1 and this is loop 2 we can uh, we can apply Kirchhoff law for any loop that is loop 1 loop means a closed circuit this is from this one is also a closed circuit A D E A F this one this one also a closed circuit this one also a closed circuit we can apply we can apply equation in any circuit closed circuit so first so of all we will apply uh, loop circuit uh, sir, uh, equations, Kirchhoff law of equations, Kirchhoff laws in a loop one. So here is one one. So E E uh, this one we call E one. This one we call E two. Or indirectly uh, E one minus current is flowing from here to here. So and let us suppose current in this loop is I1 uh, this current is in this is I3 here I1 and here is I2 so now now we will write the equations E1 minus E1 minus I3 1 this one now for this one current is flowing from this direction to same direction so minus i3 into 40 minus 30 current in this resistance is i1 i1 and we this slope is completed so it is 0 put the value 45 minus so I1 minus 40 I3 minus 30 I1 is equals to 0. This is our equation 1. Now we have three variables. Uh, we have two variables. Okay. We can simplify it more simplify. I 43 I3 minus 30 I1 equals to 0 and we will give it equation 1 not it this is our equation 1 now for the second loop this equation for first loop for loop 1 for loop 2 so from here to here e1 minus e1 minus i current i3 minus 40 i3 minus now in this branch current is i2 so and it is lower to higher potential so whenever we go through lower potential to higher potential we will add the voltage and whenever we go from higher to lower potential we will minus the voltage okay here we go through here to here okay so when we go okay we will uh, summarize it later so 80 minus now higher to lower minus 1 i2 because the current in this branch is i2 minus 20 i2 is equals to 0 so even 45 minus i3 and i1 this will be 43 i3 plus 18 minus 21 i2 and this will be more 40 and i this will be 125 minus 43 i3 minus 21 i2 is equals to 0 this is equation now at point n we will apply the kcl at point A applying KCL 
KCL summation i in is equals to summation i out then incoming currents are is i3 and outgoing current is i1 plus i2 so here we have three variables and three equation so we can find out so we can find the all these three values so from 1 and 2 we can put the equation of i3 125 125 minus 43 i1 plus i2 minus 21 i2 equals to 0 minus 43 i1 and this will be 3 5 4 and 64 i2 equals to 0 so this is our equation for from 3 and 1 3 and 1 we can write 45 minus 43 i1 plus i2 minus 30 i1 equals to 1 so now we will uh, 43 this will be 43 and 30 will be 83 i1 uh, sorry 73 i1 minus 43 i2 equals to 0 and this equation will be 5 now we will uh, now we will solve the equation 4 and 5 we will get values like uh, we will get the value of i1 i2 i1 i2 and i3 so we can solve it uh, and uh, we will get the value of i1 i2 and i3 so this is the easy method to find out the uh, this is the easy method to find out the current in the uh, in the circuit circuit difficult circuits like this we cannot easily find uh, the current i1 i2 i3 in all these branches so kirchhoff flow help us to find out the current in the current and voltage across so this is for enough for today's lecture thank you very much